JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's weekly market outlook webinar for the week December the 14th until December the 18th. I am Harlan Bospisuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a very busy week ahead of us with four central banks deciding on monetary policy, the FOMC, the Bank of England, the SNB, and the Bank of Japan. The only, bank, the only bank expected to act is the Fed, and thus, with regards to the others, we will just, uh, just scan the statements for hints on how they plan to move forward. Following the decision of the EU and the UK to extend Brexit talks, we will also keep our gaze locked on headlines surrounding that front. So let's take the let's take everything from the beginning. Today, during the Asian session, we already got Japan's Tankan survey for the fourth quarter, with both the large manufacturers and non-manufacturers indices rising by more than expected. Re the rest of the day appears relatively light in terms of economic data releases. The only one worth mentioning is Eurozone's industrial production for October, which is expected to have rebounded 2% month over month after sliding 0.4% in September. Now, on Tuesday, Asian time, the RBA releases the minutes from uh, the monetary policy meeting held at the beginning of the month. Officials uh, stood uh, pat and repeated that they are prepared to do more if necessary. With the governor uh, Low noting that uh, that the November, excuse me, with governor Low noting at the November meeting that a negative rate is extremely unlikely, we believe that the bank. Uh, uh, the, we believe that if any new easing is needed, this will come in the form of quantitative easing expansion. That said, with the bank noting that the Australian economic recovery is underway and that recent data have generally been better than expected, we don't see the case for further action anytime soon. So we will scan the minutes to see whether officials are indeed more likely to stay sidelined in the months to come or whether they are considering to act uh, at one of uh, the upcoming uh, gatherings. From China, we get the fixed asset investment, industrial production, and retail sales all for the month of uh, November. Fixed asset investment is forecast to have accelerated to 2.6% year over year from 1.8%, while the industrial production year over year rate is expected to have ticked up to 7% from 6.9%. Retail sales are also anticipated to have accelerated to 5.1% year over year from 4.3%. Now, during the, early, during the early European morning, you, we get the UK employment report for October. The unemployment rate is forecast to have increased to 5.1% from 4.8%, while average weekly earnings, including bonuses, are expected to have accelerated to 2.3% from 1.3%. The excluding bonuses rate is also forecast to have risen to 2.6% year over year from 1.9%. Now, with the EU and the UK deciding to extend their talks over a potential uh, trade accord, we don't expect pound traders to pay much attention to UK data this week, rather than to headlines surrounding the negotiations. Anything suggesting that the two sides find it uh, hard to bridge their differences may push the pound lower, while for the currency to gain more headlines that some sort of consensus is reached uh, are needed. Later in the day, we have Canada's housing starts and the U.S. industrial production both uh, for November. Canada housing starts are expected to have held relatively steady, while the, UA, uh, while the U.S. industrial production is anticipated to have slowed to 0.3% month over month from 1.1%. 
Now on Wednesday, the FOMC ends its two-day monetary policy meeting and will announce its uh, decision. The committee's uh, last meeting proved to be an on event as it took place in the midst of uh, the US elections. Officials just decided to keep their monetary policy set things unchanged and maintain their pledge to do whatever they can to support their coronavirus hit economy. With the virus keep spreading fast, inflation running well below the 2% objective, and the Congress yet to agree on a new coronavirus aid bill, officials are more likely than not to expand their stimulative efforts at this gathering. Market chatter suggests uh, that policymakers are expected to increase uh, purchases of uh, longer-dated treasuries in order to contain a rise in yields. Thus, if they just do that, the market is unlikely to move much. For equities and other risk-linked assets to gain, officials have to introduce more easing and signal that uh, more uh, may be in the works. As uh, for Wednesday's uh, as for Wednesday's data, during the early European session, we get the UK CPIs for November, but as we already noted, we don't expect the pound to react to UK data releases as its uh, traders are likely to keep their gaze locked on developments surrounding the Brexit landscape. Then we get the preliminary market manufacturing and services PMIs for December from the euro area, the UK and the US. Both Eurozone's manufacturing and services indices are expected to have declined to 53 and 41 from 53.8 and 41.7 respectively. But strangely, the composite index is forecast to have risen to 45.6 from 45.3. No forecast is available uh, for the UK data, while the US expectations are for uh, declines as well. From the US, we also get the retail sales for November, with expectations pointing to a 0.3% month-over-month slide after a 0.3% uh, increase in October. Canada's CPIs for the same month are also due to be released. The headline rate is forecast to have ticked up to 0.8% year-over-year from 0.7%, while no forecast is available for the core rate. Now on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the SNB and the Bank of England. Kicking off with the SNB, when they last met, policymakers of this bank kept their policy untouched reiterating that the Swiss franc is highly valued and that they remain ready to step up FX uh, market interventions when deemed, when deemed necessary. Since then, the Swiss franc has gained notably against the US dollar, but stayed relatively unchanged against the euro. In our view, bearing in mind that the SNB pays more attention to the euro-Swiss uh, exchange rate, officials are unlikely to strengthen to strengthen their intervention language. We believe that they will keep their policy unchanged and uh, that the statement will be more or less a repetition of the previous one. Now, passing the ball to the Bank of England, we don't expect any action here either. At its prior gathering, the Bank of England decided to keep interest rates uh, unchanged at 0.10%, but expanded its uh, asset purchase program by more than initially expected. In the statement accompanying the decision, Officials uh, noted that the outlook for the economy remains unusual, unusually uncertain and that they stand ready to increase QE again if market conditions, uh, if market functioning worsens. Although officials of this bank are ready to deliver more, we don't expect this to happen now. Over the weekend, EU and UK Brexit negotiators agreed to extend talks over a potential trade agreement, something that increased hopes that an accord could eventually be reached. Therefore, we believe that the central bank will wait for the final outcome of the talks before deciding whether to uh, whether and how to act. A trade accord may allow policymakers to stay sidelined for a while more, while a no-deal Brexit may force them to cut rates into the negative territory for the first time in the bank's history. For now, as we already noted, the pound is likely to stay sensitive to headlines surrounding the negotiations. With regards to Thursday's economic releases, during the, uh, during the Asian trading, we get New Zealand's GDP for the third quarter and Australia's employment report for November. New Zealand's GDP is expected to have rebounded 13.5% quarter over quarter after sliding 12.2% in the second quarter, something that will drive the year over year rate up to minus 1.3% from minus 12.4%. 
at its latest monetary policy meeting, the RBNZ kept its official cash rate and large-scale asset purchase program unchanged. And although it noted that it will launch a funding for lending program in December, Governor Andrea Noor said that uh, domestic activity since August has been more resilient than previously assumed, which means that the chance for adopting uh, negative interest rates may, ha may have eased. So in our view, a decent rebound in economic activity may diminish the likelihood for uh, negative rates even further. In Australia, the unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at 7%, while the net change in employment is expected to have uh, is expected to reveal that the economy has gained uh, 50,000 jobs after gaining 178.8 thousand in October. Now, conditional upon the minutes confirming that uh, RBA officials are not in a rush to act again anytime soon, this release is unlikely to make them change their minds. Um, Later in the day, we have Eurozone's final CPIs for November, but uh, as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Now, finally, on Friday, uh, it's the turn of the Bank of Japan. No material change is expected from this bank either, and thus, the yen is unlikely to react. We believe that the safe haven currency will stay mostly sensitive to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment, and especially the coronavirus and its uh, vaccines. The first doses of the vaccine developed uh, by uh, Pfizer and its uh, German par partner uh, BioNTech will be delivered on Monday to 145 locations around the US, and the degree of its effectiveness may be the catalyst behind the next direction of the market. Anything suggesting that there are no side effects may allow risk-linked assets to march north and force safe havens, like the Japanese yen, to slide. Japan's national CPIs for November are also coming out ahead of the monetary policy decision. While no forecast is available for uh, the headline rate, the core one is expected to have uh, slid further into the negative territory. Specifically, it is expected to have declined to minus 0.9% year over year from minus 0.7%. Later in the day, we have the UK and Canadian uh, and Canadian retail sales for November and October, respectively. In the UK, both headline and core sales are expected to have declined 4.2% month over month and 3.3% month over month, after rising 1.2 and 1.3% respectively, while in Canada, both the headline and core rates are expected to have fallen to 0.1% and 0.3% month over month from 1.1 and 1% uh, respectively. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.